The Selfish Path to Romance. Download Chapter 1 for free at drkenner.com. Robert, you are dealing with some stress at work? Yes, I am, Doc. Oh, I can hear it in your voice. Yeah, tell me what's going on. Well, I'm a heavy equipment operator in the oil field, so it's a rather stressful environment in the first place. We're always got deadlines that are really tight. It's always rush, 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 rush. Yeah. Well, yesterday I made the mistake, I suppose, of using some company supplies out of a company vehicle that one of the other operators was using yeah. just for transportation. Yeah. This morning he confronted me about it. I said, yeah, I got fuel out of the truck for my machine because I'm behind. I can't keep up with all the fueling all three machines and a truck. Oh, so you took some fuel from that truck? Yeah, it's... Okay, uh, no, uh, I'm just trying to hear you clearly yeah, because... Yeah, yeah, okay. Right, you do this every day, and I'm kind of out of... I'm, I'm not accustomed to doing that, so go ahead. And it's nothing unusual in this yeah. company. We're in this line of work that if one of the trucks has got extra equipment fuel left over... Yeah. ...to get it and use it where you need it. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure why this guy got so upset. Yeah. Unless maybe he's selling the fuel after hours or something, you know, stealing it from the company, maybe, but... This yeah. morning he confronted me when we were filling our tanks and threatened to punch me in the face. Okay. So he's threatening physical force. And what what is your recourse? Well, at the time... Oh, thanks. One final hard later. Oh, you're breaking <laughs> up a bit. Sorry. Um, at the time, I was pretty upset whenever he confronted me there in public and... Started getting loud and abusive, and told me if I ever touched it again, I'd punch him in the that he would punch me in the face. Yeah. I told him, "Look, dude, man, that's company property in a company truck. Yeah. And it was late in the evening, and you're not using it, so I've got a right to take it. Yeah. He told me I'll put a padlock on it, and I see you look at my truck again, I will punch you in the face. Okay. Like, okay. So I told him, you know, man, I don't have time for this. I got stuff to do. So I got my truck and I left the area. Yeah. I went to the job site. Yeah. Well, over the course of the day, I started getting phone calls from other employees on our other job site. Yeah. Wanting to know what's going on. What's going on? Yeah. Because I talked to the boss about this. So I'm right. like, this guy's flipping out on me, and he's a great big muscle bound bodybuilder guy. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. And I was a little bit worried about it because, you know, I'm not a very physically fit person in the first place. Yeah. I told the boss, you know, keep the guy away from me. Don't keep him on any job with me because if he does come after me, I'm going to pick up something. I'm going to defend myself. Right. Now I'm hearing from other employees that he's going all over the company telling everybody I'm a rat, that I've turned him in, that I tried to get him fired, and he's going to catch me after hours, and he's going to stomp me into a mud hole. Okay, so it, this sounds like a, a le- you're talking about workplace violence. He's made a physical threat against you. You It sounds like you did everything from the way you're describing it, that you did a lot of things right, that you... Uh, that you just said, man, I don't have time for this. So you didn't escalate it. You didn't say, I'm going to punch you back. You didn't threaten him. You went to the other person. You, you First, you tried to reach the guy by reason, by telling him, look, it's company property, and it's fine to do this. The second thing is that you de- sounds like you dealt with him decently. Then you went one step further, which you absolutely morally needed to do for yourself and for the situation which is to tell your boss about it. Now, I don't know how it got out in the field, whether your boss said something. I don't know how the other side of it. I went on to work, and I've been out there all day hearing phone calls and rumors coming back at me from my other friends in this company. But, wow, dude, what would you do? This guy's out to get you now. Okay, you need facts, and it sounds like you need to go to the next level for your own protection, which would be what? Well... Really, other than me finding a different job or him finding a different job, okay. I don't know what else I'd do. I, I, I might get police. Course, file a restraining order or something. Yeah, that's that. what crossed my mind. I might, I might. If you do, you have a human resources at the company. No, unfortunately, we don't. You don't. Um, I'm not We're sure. Not right. I might just contact the local police and ask them for as much guidance because. If you're dealing with potential workplace violence, man, you want to catch it early, and you certainly yeah. This has just been bugging me all 
day. Yeah, and it would bug any, I think any rational person it would bug because you have a physical, vague threat against you. And before it escalates, you don't want to escalate it, you don't want to counter-threaten him, and you haven't done that. Uh, you know, you walked away from it, but it, because he feels really threatened now, you can ask your boss for advice. Is there a boss above your boss? Nope. He's no. the owner of the company. He's the owner of the company. I would ask yep. him for guidance, and then you independently can go to the police and just say... Well, the problem is that he inherited the company from his father when his father was killed in an accident. He's okay. only three years old. What, um, he has no idea how to deal with this. Another thing My you wife can... has right. become recently disabled, and she can't drive. And okay, I have to work out so of town, it's so. really, so um, your life comes first. You could try. Hey, I got to interrupt this because we've got to pay some bills. 30 seconds, that's it. A very quick ad and then Alan will be back. Romance. <laughs> I wish I knew more about what girls want from a relationship. Boy, I wish I knew more about what I want. Where's that ad I saw? Here it is. The Selfish Path to Romance, a serious romance guidebook. Download Chapter 1 for free at SelfishRomance.com and buy it at Amazon.com. Huh. The Selfish Path to Romance. That is interesting. So, um, your life comes first. You could try going back to this guy and just, I mean, if he confronts you, I wouldn't go seek him out. If he confronts you, you say, man, you know, I regret that I did that. And, you know, it's not an apology. You uh, regret that you did it because of him, but you might try to diffuse him. You know, but my guess is usually when someone's pulse is above 100, meaning they're really angry, it doesn't have to, it's usually, you're not the primary source of this guy's <laughs> anger, the guy that's angry with you, this bodybuilder who's angry with you. You know, you're not the primary source. You, you, you're just someone that happened to be in the way. You know how someone can be mad at something else? And, and then just you, catch it. you happen to catch it. You happen to be the dog in the path of somebody who is angry, and they kick the dog. Well, I'm afraid that it's thoroughly focused on me. Right. He, 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 is is focused the on you. he is focused and on you. He is focused on you. I'm trying to get into my motel room, and he's over there across the way. Oh, he is. Oh, I would call the cops. I, no, I think you need to call the cops. I need. He has crossed the line. I would do that for myself. I would do that for my kids. I mean, ultimately, it's your decision. It is your life, though. He's not messing around. And if he's a bodybuilder, I don't know his psychology, but it doesn't sound like it's that stable. Um, so I would, yeah. I, I would really, I think you're right to to have focused on it rather than to, you know, laugh it off or something. But I think it's beyond what you can do. I mean, I wouldn't be able to physically defend myself. I would, well, I would I'm need to get all the cops on him. I'm going to lose my job. <sighs> but and you have your life. Uh, you ten years of effort. Uh, invested in this company, and I don't plan on. You know, it's it it's going to be a tough call. I don't know what it, what you can do. Whether you can hire a private investigator or a bodyguard for yourself, it's just that you're going to need to document what's going on. If people have been sending texts or tweets or emails, you might need that evidence with the police. You need if you think of what you would do if it was your son in this situation or a loved one in this situation. What advice? with that you give them and that's the advice you'd want to give yourself that's not good advice because i know what i'd do if somebody was threatening my child in a situation what would you do i would react quite wrongly i would react oh no really the, strongly. okay you don't want to react strongly you want to react self with in self-defense so i would get the mm -hmm. the consider yeah, getting to myself i'm a yeah. mild-mannered person listen but. i know we need to wrap it up I would consider getting support from outside. You know, it's ultimately your choice. Listen, thank you so much for the call, and I wish you the best. And here's a little more from Dr. Kenner. Thank you all for coming, and I think there's been a serious misunderstanding. I want you all to know that everything that you have seen in my theater is an illusion. It's a trick. It's not real. I can't bring loved ones back from the grave. I can't receive messages from the other side. I apologize if I've given you any false hope. My intention has only been to entertain, nothing more. 
And that's from the movie The Illusionist. And have you been taken in by some scams? Maybe somebody says that they can tell your future through astrology or they can read your palm or other scams. If you've been taken in by them, there must be a little part in your mind, a little corner in your mind that says... I'm not sure I really buy this. I want to buy it because I like what they say or oh, I don't like what they say, but I'm scared. Uh, what if it is true? How do you know? And that question, how do you know? How do you know what's a scam and what's true is what you want to pay more attention to. You want to figure out for your for yourself what is fact and what is fiction? And there, because there are people who will use fiction as a weapon against you, either to get your money or to get power over you or to feel good about themselves, that they have super sensory powers that you don't have. And man, if somebody claims to have powers that you don't have, if they claim that they have extra sensory, no matter what, if it's extra sensory and uh, humans don't have it, they don't have it either. For more Dr. Kenner podcast, go to drkenner.com and please listen to this ad. Here's an excerpt from The Selfish Path to Romance by Dr. Ellen Kenner. Emotional intimacy is the most fundamental prerequisite for sexual interest and arousal and pleasure in a successful long-term relationship. Emotional intimacy is a feeling of psychological closeness to your partner and the result of the quality of the whole relationship. Attraction and desire are greatest when you feel visible to your partner. You selfishly value your partner and are selfishly valued in return. You understand the causes of your love. You work toward making yourself lovable. You choose the right partner. You feel understood and valued and you communicate well. You also feel that your partner is emotionally and openly expressive in ways that create a positive emotional climate. You can download Chapter 1 for free at drkenner.com and you can buy the book at amazon.com.